All right. Well, praise the Lord. Another Friday night <clears throat> here in the month of April. Amen. Spring started uh, coming very much alive to us this week. Amen. We had good temperatures this week. Uh, today's probably the coolest day of the week until we hit Sunday. Sunday, going to be a little bit chilly. Only hitting the high 50 mark. Uh, 50, 59, I believe, for high. But we've had beautiful weather here. I mean, isn't the Lord good? I'm glad spring has finally sprung. Uh, you know, I'd shared a couple weeks ago about uh, about uh, uh, transplanting a, what I called a a oak tree uh, seedling, but I'm sure probably uh, uh, somebody that's really into uh, planting trees and so forth and so on probably wouldn't have called that tree a a, a, a seedling. It's about that high, and uh, uh, but. Uh, I, I I dug it out from an area that was open for somebody to take it and and planted it right on the property property line of my neighbor and 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 my property line and and hey man the the uh, buds opened up on it and we got little leaves starting to come forth on that tree. And that's a good sign. You know, when you can't get a, a, a large uh, area of the dirt that that tree was taken from, that you, 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 you dug it out from, and you can't get a large area of root from it, you know, you, 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 you watch over that. You watch over that tree to see how it's doing, to see whether life is 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 still in that tree. Amen. And when I seen those little buds get bigger and and finally open, and I got little leaves on there, hey, that's a good sign. I got life. Those roots are starting to really take hold of the soil it's been planted into, and. Uh, all I have to do now is nurse it through next winter. And if I see life in that tree coming forth strong next spring, I won't have to worry about that tree. Uh, really, uh, you know, an uh, oak tree is a good, strong tree. And even, even as a young tree, uh, I won't have to be co so concerned about that tree anymore. And uh, I, I wanted to plant something that I knew would be strong and would rise up to be a majestic tree. And uh, I may not see those days <laughs> when it's very large, strong, and majestic, but, uh, you know, that's what God expects of us. He wants us to grow and to mature and to become strong and majestic in Him. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, you had to know I was leading that 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 story about that tree transplant somewhere, and you know we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the uh, glorious light of the kingdom of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. We as Christians, and God is looking for us to grow and mature and become strong and majestic in Him, amen, and in the life of His Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Well, last week we started a message. Uh, I entitled the message, The Spirit Versus the Flesh, but actually it should be The Flesh Versus the Spirit, because it should be the Spirit's. Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, and our spirit being brought to a place of unity where they're operating in and of one another in unity. That brings strength into our lives. Amen. We we no longer look at it as us to have the strength 
to live and to walk out and to to fulfill God's plans and purposes in our life and to, to be those who are pleasing in, in God's sight. It's not our strength that can do it, but it's the strength of the Spirit of God living in us and communing and fellowship in unity with our spirit. The Spirit of God. Amen. You know, the Word of God tells us that if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, amen, dwells in us, amen, we need that same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from death that come forth in resurrection power out of that grave, victorious. It's that same spirit of life we are given in Christ Jesus to live and accomplish God's purpose in our life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm excited. So let's let's just say this title here tonight is going to be the, the flesh versus the spirit part two. Amen. And we were we were looking at scriptures from Galatians chapter five and we were working through the whole chapter. And last week, I think we finished up somewhere about verse 15. And so in tonight's uh, time of Scripture, we're going to look at verses uh, uh, 16 through 26. But we're going to we're going to recap verses 14 and 15. Because that sets us up for the rest of the chapter. Amen. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> Let's just take a, a quick review here of verses 14 and 15. In verse... Excuse me. In verse 14... It says, reading out of the New American Standard Version, every once in a while I might pick up the New Living Translation I got sitting here off to the side of me and, and read a verse from that uh, when I feel it really makes things a little bit more understanding to uh, modern man. Uh, For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. Now, here in Galatians chapter 5, it only gives us one half of two, two statements in Scripture that fulfills the law. But here in verse 14, it, it uses this statement from Scripture, is filled in one word, in this statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, how many of you know what the other verse is? It comes ahead of that. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we love God, His love is made alive in our hearts that we can love our neighbors. Amen. We can. We can love our neighbor, neighbors. We can even love those who are not lovable.
but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And verse 15 goes on to say, hey, but if you're not walking in that place, where where you're allowing the Spirit of God to bring your human spirit into the place of dominance of your whole being. You may find that you are of those described in verse 15. But if you bite and devour one another, take care. Otherwise, be careful lest you be consumed one of another. Lest you be consumed one of another. Now that takes place when we allow our flesh and the carnality of our minds to be in the place of dominance. Our flesh and our soul, our, our soulish realm, our, our intellect, intellect, our will and emotions is what dominated us B.C., before Christ. But here in, verse, in chapter 5 of the book of Galatians, we are going to be receiving instruction on allowing the Spirit of God ministering through our spirit to bring our spirit man into the dominance of the rest of our being. Amen. Under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Well, I reviewed those two two verses. I mean, hey, have you ever been in a, 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 you know, hey, I hate to bring this out because I don't know who's always listening, but I'm 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 addressing basically born again, blood washed, blood bought believers. disciples of Christ in in these messages I'm bringing out of chapter 5 of the book of Galatians but whenever the flesh and 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 the carnality uh, of, of your 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 soulish realm is being controlled by the flesh your your soulish realm, being controlled by the flesh, your intellect, your will, and your emotions. These are the things that can transpire, and it's terrible when it takes place in churches. You know, the number one tactic, I believe, Satan uses to try to bring down and destroy the local work of the ecclesia in a community, the, the, the church, is division and strife. That's what we're talking about when it says, uh, bite and devour one another. And you'll end up being consumed one of another. You know, hey, listen. There's one thing I learned uh, probably a whole lot later than what I should have. But it's because I didn't have much discipling as somebody who, who prayed a prayer to, uh, to, to have salvation God's salvation as a, a young boy. 
eight years of age. But there was one thing that was in the church. No matter how small it might have been, I'm not going to condemn the church, but I know that there was a, a, a lump of leaven there in the church, and it was called legalism. Man-made rules applied and attached to what the Scriptures speak and address us on how we as Christians, as the followers and disciples of Christ, are to live life. And I mean, it made shipwreck, shipwreck of my life as a teenager. I mean, I had totally, totally, totally lost sight of the things of God and how I was to live as a child of God. Because that little lump, of leaven, leaven this whole loaf of my life. I was deceived thinking I was saved by God's grace, but it was up to me in my strength, my natural human strength to live out the life that we're called to live according to the New Testament scriptures, particularly in the epistles, the books after the four gospels in the New Testament. Made shipwreck of me, of my life. And I lived a very tormented and troubled period of time through my young teenage years up till I was 20 uh, years of age. And uh, uh, I think I figured it out five or six days shy of seven months old. 20 years of age, five or six days shy of seven months. 20 years and seven months old in the natural man. And I mean, it did not give me a good future that I was seeing. And it did not give me much hope in life as a, as a young man at that age. This is one reason I wanted to review those two verses, because it leads off good then, starting with verse 16, which we're picking up tonight. But let's pray first before we do that. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time in the Word. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your Word. And that, Lord God, there is life and instruction for life in your word if we will just receive it, read it, study it, meditate upon it. Let it get down deep into our hearts, our spirit, man, our innermost being to where it becomes life, life, life to us. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. And in his life, we now move and live and have our being. Amen. Amen. Once again, I want to thank Senior Pastor Mike Yeager for the opportunity to be speaking to you here on Friday nights <clears throat> from the pulpit here. I thank him for that opportunity. And I look forward to to heaven someday just finding out the fruit that is coming forth from uh, our church holding. It's, it's now over a year 
this month, we hit a year of almost, I'll say almost 100%, three services a day, seven days a week. Amen. Hallelujah. And how long are we going to do it? Well, I guess until God says uh, to the pastor that it's it's time to move on or else, you know, uh, people uh, quit participating and be unused to minister the word and teach the word and preach the word from the pulpit here three times a day, seven days a week. Amen. Uh, I want to let senior pastor uh, know that we've been praying for him and his family as they have been fighting uh, uh, an attack of, 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 of the devil, the enemy, uh, in, in their uh, flesh, uh, in their bodies as far as health uh, here this week. And uh, uh, I, I, I'm believing that God has totally ministered health to all that family. Amen. Amen. All right. Verse 16 now is where we're starting tonight. And um, we, we, we find, <coughs> we find that there is a way that the law could be fulfilled. Under the Old Covenant, I mean, hey, if you read the Old Testament and you read the rules and the regulations that were in the law, there was no man under the law that could live that life in and of their own strength till God sent His only begotten, the only one to come forth from Him, into the earth through the womb of, a wo womb of a virgin woman named Mary in a body of flesh. And his name was Jesus. He was the Christ, the promised Messiah, the anointed. And he was the only man that was capable, that totally looked to God as his source and his strength, constantly pursuing the will of God in his life, and he fulfilled the law. He completed it. Amen. He lived it out in its entirety. As a man in the flesh, in 30, 33 years of life here on this earth. Amen. That's why it's only Jesus that is the way, the truth, and the life. The only one that we can come before the Father, before a holy God and be declared righteous. It's only through Him, receiving Him as our personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Verse 16 starts off then tonight. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit, capital S, by the strength of God's Spirit in you. Given your spirit that place of dominance over your whole being, under the leading and the guiding and the, the, the strength of God's Holy Spirit in you. And you won't fulfill. You won't carry out the desires of the flesh. You'll be able to overcome the flesh. Amen. 
We should not be given given in to the desires of our our flesh. Our nature. The carnality and 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 weakness of humanity after the fall in the garden. Before then, man was dominated by the Spirit of God in him, and his spirit had dominance over his flesh and his soul. Amen. You know, I've, I've, I've explained it many times. If you've followed Pastor Charles, I've explained it many times. That out of Genesis 1, I believe it's verses 25 and 26, where we find out, out of the truth of the statement that God made there in those verses, let us, who's us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune Godhead, let us make man after our image and after our likeness. Of a truth of that, we are a triune being. We live in a body. We possess a soul. And we are a spirit. Amen. Even fallen man has a spirit. But that spirit is what died when man partook of the forbidden fruit from off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God told his man, Adam, when he called him into the garden and showed him the trees in the center and spoke and directed his attention to that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, in the day you, you eat thereof, you shall surely die. And the spirit of man died to the acknowledgement, the understanding, the comprehension of God. Before then, man had the freedom to be in communion and fellowship with God. God came down in the cool of the evening and walked with his creation man. Amen. There in the garden. But all that changed in the day that Adam took from his wife the fruit that she had already ate from off of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Man says, well, that's, that's it. That's, that's it. The woman's to blame. No, God said the woman was beguiled. She was tricked into partaking of it the serpent was sly and he come across where 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 he he challenged her on whether god actually said that but who did god call into the garden he called his man adam into the garden and spoke to adam adam freely when his wife told him that he she had ate of it and 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 told told him see see look it's good to eat eat it see she didn't she would she she didn't have her eyes opened up yet to the reality of the death that took place until adam her head her covering took that fruit he took it with knowledge of knowing what God had said. It didn't come to him secondhand. It came to him straight from the, the heart and the mouth of God. So he took it with knowledge. He took it with the knowledge that death would take place. And when he took it, then his wife also 
became aware of the death, the spiritual death, the separation that now was there between them and their creator, God Almighty. But here, Paul instructing us in this letter that he wrote to the church at Galatia says, Walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Amen. It's only through the strength of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in us that we are able to overcome sin in our mortal flesh. And our sin, our flesh, gravitates to sin quickly. That was the first part of us that lined up with the fallen nature that we had after the spiritual death that took place when sin entered into the world. Amen. We were all born in sin. But listen. Just as you expect that little baby that you and your wife have been blessed with to grow and mature and be able to overcome so much of the weakness that's in that flesh of that, that, that child as they grow and mature uh, physically and and. Uh, mentally and, and, and uh, uh, come to a place of acknowledging the sin that they've been born into and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior, the only way to be made righteous once again with our Creator. Amen. Verse 17 goes on to to, to speak to us here. Uh, it says, For the flesh sets itself, sets its desires against the Spirit, capital S, against the things of God's Spirit. Otherwise, it lusts against the things of the Spirit. And the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition. They're contrary one to the other. They oppose one another. So that you may not do the things that you des that you please, that you you please, that you wish to do. You know, Paul addressed that. He addressed that in the book of Romans. He said, Hey, the things that I desire to do, I do not. And the things that I I I I do not desire to do, those things I do. We all have the flesh and the spirit working against each other. But we got to give way to the power of the spirit of God, the spirit of life, the spirit of Zoe, God kind of life in us. Amen. God can never be defeated by sin. Never. And if we will draw on the power of His Spirit in us and the Spirit of life that we have in Christ Jesus through that Spirit of God, 
Amen. We too shall be able to triumph over the flesh. We're instructed in Scripture that we are to crucify the works of the flesh. Amen. Verse 18 continues here, and it says, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Remember back here in, 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 in uh, uh, verse uh, 14, it tells us how to fulfill the law. The fulfillment of the law was found in us when we are able to love one another as ourselves, when we put preference and give preference to others ahead of ourselves. When you can love another more than you love yourself, you are triumphing over the very nature of your flesh. <clears throat> now in verse 19, amen, we are not to operate under the law. We've been set free and delivered from having to fulfill the law in our own strength because we take and find our strength of life in He, Christ Jesus, who fulfilled and completed, lived it out in perfection in a body of flesh, even like ours. Amen. Amen. He did it as a man. Remember, he laid all his deity aside when he came into obedience of God and allowed himself to be brought down and birthed out of the womb of a woman and become man. He lived here on earth in the power of a man fully given to the power of God's Spirit working and operating in him. Amen. Amen. Verse 19 says, Now the deeds of the flesh are evident. Now we're going to look at, at, at what's the predominance of our human flesh left in the power of its strength. The deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality. Now here in the New Living Translation, it says, it addresses it as sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, amities, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, disputes, and dissensions and factions. Factions. I look down here at my footnotes on that, and that word means heresies. False teaching. If we try to walk in our flesh, we'll be subject to the, 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 the false teachings being brought in. Damnable doctrines, men, and demons.
the heresy that I was trapped and kept in bondage in was the idea that I needed to live out the life of of a disciple of Jesus Christ in my own strength. But thank God, somewhere around October 17th, right there in that ballpark of 1974, at 20 years and five or six days short of seven months, I, had the revelation of truth revealed to me by God through the ministry of His Spirit drawing me to God. And I realized it was no longer I, but it had to be Christ living in me. Amen? And my position being of living in Christ Jesus. Now I'm going to read verse 19 out of the New Living Translation. Here I thought I'd be well well ahead of uh, 45 minutes in getting this message done because it's only 10 verses I had to finish up here. But, but I'm finding myself struggling uh, yet for time, because God just gives me different things to, to speak sometimes in, in an instant, in a moment of time as I'm ministering. Amen. But verse 19 says here in the New Living, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, that's the flesh, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, pleasures, adultery, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, envy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, Paul speaking to the Galatian church, the Galatian believers, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. You won't enter into God's kingdom. If you're living that kind of life. All those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit. Now, I love that. At least I got to get this verse accomplished. The next two verses accomplished here. Before I end my message tonight. And then just ask you to finish reading the rest of the chapter. Which ends at verse 26. But verse 22 says the fruit of the spirit is love. Amen. What did we start with there? In, in uh, uh, verse 14. About fulfilling the law, how do it how is it fulfilled love? Amen. So the fruit, the the nature and the character uh, uh, that 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 is brought in our lives as believers should be that of love. It's the fruit of the spirit, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And against such things, there is no law. Why? Because your life's hidden in Christ. 
you're drawing from the power of, 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 of the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead and brought him forth victorious, triumphant over uh, death, hell, and the grave. Amen. Hell representing what? Sin. Sin. The serpent in the garden introduced hell to humanity. Satan is known as a liar and the father of all lies. And yet most of humanity follows after the lie. The lie. The lie. After Satan. They're under the dominion of his kingdom of darkness. And thank God, October of 1974, the revelation of the knowledge of the kingdom of God's glorious light in Christ Jesus was fully revealed and manifested in me. And I am no longer, longer under the law trying to live out the commands of God in my own strength, but it's Christ in me. Hallelujah. Christ in me. Praise God. I triumph always in Christ Jesus. Thank God I have the victory in Christ Jesus. Tonight, tonight, I challenge you, even as God has challenged me, that we, uh, we need to allow these fruits of the Spirit to be prevalent consistently in our lives. Amen. And I'll guarantee you, if you try to live out the fruits of the Spirit consistently in your own flesh, you'll never succeed. Oh, I won't say that some of these things don't tend to be in people that don't have Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. I mean, hey, there can be a measure of goodness in people. There can be people who practice uh, 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 a, a level of patience of kindness, of gentleness. They have some measure of peace, but they don't know the Prince of Peace. So they don't have the peace that passes all understanding. Oh, they, they can practice a measure of faithfulness. I mean, hey, there's all believers that have lived out the marriage covenant with their spouse until death they did part. But was it lived out with all these fruits of the Spirit consistently being practiced, being a place where they they, they, they lived and they dwelled in them on a consistent basis? No. You have to be a child of God because it's only through the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit in us, that we can enter into that place of seeing the consistency of all these fruits being the practice of our life. Amen.
being consistent in our lives. Self-control. <laughs> hey, all you have to do is, is be invited to go to a, a, a smorgasbord and see just how much self-control you have. <laughs> see how much self-control you have. You know, the sin of gluttony is a sin. I often warn that we need to be we need to be careful of the two 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 sins that start with a G. Gluttony and gossip. Listen, we need to be making it consistent, the fruits of the Spirit being active in us, being lived out consistently in us to the people around us amen god bless we'll see you next week i don't know what i'm going to go into a full study of the book of galatians but if i do when we get to chapter five the next time i'll probably go into a little bit deeper teaching on this chapter okay i'm, I'm thinking that that might be where god's leading me to do go through the whole book of galatians and and teach and minister and preach from there. Uh, so we'll we'll just see what happens till next Friday. God bless. Have a great week. And remember, go in the strength and the power of God in you. And go out and live it under the power of the Spirit of God in you before all the world. We are the light and the soul. See you next Friday night. God bless.